Hello! Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. This channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes that you find some inspiration along the way. My name is Stephanie and if you are new here, a big welcome and if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. We are heading into the final week of October, year 2021. It is hard to believe there's just a little more than two months left of this year and what a roller coaster of a year it has been. I hope you have found ways to find joy and be safe and take care of yourself and your loved ones. Um, during challenging times, it can be even harder to do all those things, but even more important for all those things to happen. Um, in my episodes, uh, closed captioning is provided. I will occasionally have images or text on the screen and I will try to alert you to them in case you are doing something else so that you look up. Um, but sometimes if I am correcting myself or something like that, I um, probably will not have given you a notice because I won't have noticed that I said something incorrectly. Um, or those corrections will also be in the description box below this video. It's like a show more or arrow or something that you can click on to um, expand that, I don't know if it's called a window, expand that box or something to see more information there. That is also where you will find links to makers, designers, um, shops, stores, whatever that I talk about in this episode today. And there is a separate section for Ravelry project pages for the projects that I talk about. Um, weather update. You know, if if you've been watching, you know that I like to talk about the weather. I am a very seasonal person and the weather just kind of sets my mood for the day, for the week, for the months. Um, we have had unseasonably warmer weather, like 60s, 70s, when we are typically in the 50s, but it is starting to cool down again. Um, although the local news this morning said it'll cool down you know, for the next several days and have a potential freeze warning, but then maybe warm slightly back up again, like to 60s, not warm, warm. But um, I mean, we have a chance of snow in October usually, but maybe not this year. So I don't know. Um, I have changed the kids' bed sheets to flannel sheets because it got pretty chilly um, some nights ago. And our garden is pretty much done. I mean, we have some stuff more to cut down and prep for the winter so it's not just a soggy mess come spring. Um, I harvested the rest of the spaghetti squash and the rest of the eggplant and there was actually a ton. Um, I was trying to give the eggplant as long as possible um, to grow as much as possible because there were some like itty bitty ones that were maybe like an inch long and some were maybe two inches but there were some like much bigger ones. Um, but yeah I cut all of those down and um, yeah, they, it's so nice to have fresh produce from garden straight to the table. Um, so that's really nice. So today I have two finished projects to share with you and a few works in progress. Two works in progress are new cast-ons. Um, I mean, I cast two things off, so I cast two things on. Um, as you may know, I am not someone that only works on one project at a time. I like to rotate through projects. I like to have different kinds of projects, some that work my brain a little harder and some that are just more meditative and just like endless knitting, knit stitches. Um, but yeah, so if you would like to grab a cozy or a cold beverage, um, go ahead and do that. I have in my mug today, I have the Taiwanese ginger brown sugar tea, or I guess it's not a tea. Can you call something a tea if there aren't like tea leaves in it? Maybe not. Um, anyway, it's a ginger brown sugar beverage and it is so nice and cozy on this chilly fall day. There are blue skies and some clouds that are moving super fast, um, but it is just absolutely beautiful outside. The maples are turning, or not are, are turning, some of them have gone past turning, but are red, that red orange that looks like it's glowing at dusk and dawn. Oh, it is absolutely stunning. And we have had the most beautiful sunrises. The sunrises in October are particularly beautiful, like the purple and the orange and the pinks. And if there's clouds, oh, it, it literally takes your breath away. It is, it is incredible. Do you have um, the opportunity to enjoy beautiful sunsets or sunrises where you are? Oh, they, they're stunning. Absolutely stunning. A 
Okay, the first finished project I'd like to share with you are a pair of socks I knit for our eight-year-old. Um, just for reference, her foot circumference is seven inches. Oh no, sorry, her foot, yeah, her foot circumference is seven inches, foot length is seven and three quarters inches, and she's wearing a U.S. Youth size two shoes. Um, these kids, they just keep growing, and so sometimes I can't keep up. But what I am thankful for is that I have two children, and uh, once the older one outgrows the socks I've knit, then the younger one gets to enjoy them. So that is nice to have them um, get more wear. So here are the socks that I recently finished, and they are super fun. I love these so much. I'm gonna hold them up closer to you so you can see how the yarn has micro striped. So there's like these lines of red and blue and yellow. So let me tell you about these socks. I knit these on US 1 2.25 millimeter 9 inch Chowgu needles and I used um, yarn remaining from previous socks that I have knit and I used up almost every single inch of that yarn which is so exciting to me. I think I referenced this in a previous episode before, but it's kind of like when you put leftovers into like storage containers for the refrigerator and when you get it just right and you can close that lid and nothing squishes out, it's like that exciting feeling. Okay, <laughs> maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but that, that's the exciting feeling I get. So, um, the contrast color here is this orange leaning vibrant red and that is an MCN or Merino Cashmere Nylon base by Colleen of Little Lion Head Knits and it's called Let's Picnic. So I did my um, peekaboo fold over cuff here and I will link to that tutorial in one of these corners up above here. I did make it slightly deeper just because the socks are slightly longer so I kind of like that look for the cuff to be a little bit bigger but a double um, cuff is so nice and cozy and it's provides a little structure and it stays up really well. Also, for those who maybe just want to break from purling or don't enjoy purling, um, there's no purling. The only purling involved in this pair of socks um, are on the wrong side of the shadow wrap heel that I have done here. So I started with 9.15 grams of my contrast color and all I had left was 0.36 grams. Um, so yes, I cast on 52 stitches with the contrast color and I knit 20 rounds of stockinette Then I cut that, joined the main color and knit 16 rounds of the main color and then I folded wrong sides together and then I knit my next round with the main color still to my cast on edge and then continue knitting from there. On this one I did 35 rounds for the leg and that gave me I think like four and a half inches from the cast on edge. Then I knit in a shadow wrap heel and I followed the tutorial by Denise of Earth Tones Girl. After I finished that I knit my foot here let's see 55 rounds so it was six and a half inches from the back of the heel and then I knit a rounded toe. Now on my second sock here, I ran out of the main color with like very few rounds left to go. So I was able to use my contrast color and you'll see here it is a tiny little bit. It is really just the tip of the toe that I had left. So yeah, the, these socks she has already worn a few times and I've already needed to wash them again. So they're actually a little damp right now sitting on these beautiful blockers by Knitting Left. It is a child blowing um, a dandelion and my children love blowing dandelions as a lot of children do and making wishes and these are so special. So I'm going to let these finish drying on here. I don't always block the socks after the initial wash. Um, I just have them on here because I was showing you today, but um, sometimes I will put them on blockers. Like if there's a particularly thick sock and I want it to dry quicker, I'll put them on blockers versus just like folding them over or hanging them like on a hanger, um, folded on that like horizontal bar part. Um, 
or if it's a sock with like heavy patterning, sometimes I'll still put it on a blocker, but otherwise usually I only put them on a blocker after the first wash um, because it would be kind of mm, tedious, not tedious, it just wouldn't, what's the word I'm looking for? It wouldn't be practical to always put freshly washed socks on blockers because I've knit so many pairs of socks and I tend to wash our whole family's pairs of socks like in a tub at once after like at the end of the week and so it's not like I have 50 blockers or however many to block every single pair of socks so I don't usually do that but um, yeah so these are my daughter's socks and she absolutely loves them and in total I used about 40 let's see almost 45 grams of yarn oh I forgot one more thing I wanted to mention so the main colorway is called Fearless, and it's dyed by Shoba of Serendipitous Wool. And I wanted to tell you how, um, how a yarn might look before you knit it if you are considering, like, or wanting something that might micro stripe. And I'm gonna insert a picture here on the screen of what the yarn looked like before I caked it up. I don't know if I have um, a picture of it also in its like twisted skein form, but what I generally look for, now it's not guaranteed that it will micro stripe, but what I generally look for are like blocks of color in the yarn when it's twisted up. So what will happen is that, is that like block of color in there will get distributed into stripes. Now, depending on your gauge and stitch count, that may or may not show up in stripes or show up in like pooling, like pooling stripe sections. So it really just depends. So it isn't guaranteed that it will micro stripe, but there's a high chance that it will. So that was just one thing I wanted to add in there that I forgot to mention. The next finished project I'd like to share with you are a pair of socks I knit for myself. I have to back up here so you can see the entire sock length. So I knit these socks out of Sockternal DK in the It's Fall colorway. It is a DK weight self-striping sock yarn. 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. I am not sure if you can get this yarn right now. I looked at her Etsy shop the other day and it was temporarily closed or on break, which I know sometimes people do um, like between updates, but I'm not quite sure what is going on in her shop right now. Um, but I love how the colors knit up. There's this green and a rusty red, kind of a brick red, uh, a golden ochre, a muted teal, um, back to this brick red. I think one brick red is slightly lighter than the other. And then this is kind of like peachy pink color. And I decided I wanted to use up as much of this yarn as possible. So I was not going to use any contrast color. When I wound my yarn into the two separate balls, because I like to knit my socks two at a time on their own needles. So these I knit up on US 3 or 3.25 millimeter, nine inch Chowgu needles. Um, I wound one in one direction and one in the other direction. So the stripes don't match up, but they each start at like the beginning of a color. And then I did my shadow wrap heel. And um, how about I talk about from cast on down to the toe? And then I'll tell you how I got my coloring to kind of be this way. Although I didn't really have to do much. So let me put one sock down. So I did an Old Norwegian cast on of 44 stitches. And for me, my foot circumference is eight inches. My foot length is nine and a quarter. And I wear a US seven women's shoe. I tell you that information just to give you a little bit of reference as far as my stitch counts and stuff like that. Um, so I cast on 44 stitches. I did a knit two, purl two ribbing for four color stripes. And then I started into the leg, which is just stockinette. I did 70 rounds. Then I just, I went until my color stripe ended, which meant I might have needed to move my beginning of round, um, which doesn't matter when it's not a patterned sock. So then I did my shadow wrap heel. And the way a lot of times self-striping yarn works, you end up with this fun color blocking in your heel, just, just the way it works. <laughs> but if you wanted to make it divide up more evenly, you could, after knitting half of your heel, 
cut the remaining color of that stripe so that you start with the next color on a clean break. Now mine isn't exactly centered, but pretty close. I mean, there's this one little section in the middle here. Um, and then I started my next color, and then I did not want to have like one green stripe across the top of the foot. So then I did cut the green yarn, which wasn't much. I think I had like maybe, maybe eight inches or so left. I, I don't remember exactly, but something like that. So I just cut that and then started with the next color. Now, had I realized that I was going to be putting in my heel between two very similar colors, I might have put in my heel at a different spot, um, but I think it's fine. I mean, I think it looks fine. So then you start back up again, continuing in the color sequence. And then for the foot, let's see, I did 50 rounds and that put me at the top of my pinky toe. And then I alternated decrease rounds with knit even until I got to 14 stitches on top, 14 stitches on bottom. And for the toe, I do switch to a 32 inch magic loop uh, method. And then once I got to 14 on top, 14 on bottom, I did only decrease rounds every round, which decreases by four stitches until I had eight on top, eight on bottom, and then I kitchenered the toe together. So yeah, I used up almost the entire um, ball of yarn. Now I started with 110.27 grams and I used up 108.34 grams. So I had less than two grams left. I think that's pretty great. That will just go into my little jar of leftover DK weight yarns that I can use in whatever I want. Okay, so on to works in progress. I think I have three that I'd like to share with you today. The first one is in this beautiful project bag. I adore it. I know I've shared it on Instagram, but I can't remember if I've um, used it or shared it on um, this channel yet. I have this beautiful quilt block that I sewed with a moth that has kind of gold in the fabric. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. And then this navy um, kind of floral and star and moon pattern. And then um, this burnt sienna, raw sienna colored fabric around it and a cream with roses drawstring channel and then the back is this cozy cozy uh, plaid flannel and then I've got my little tag here that I hand stitched on because I sometimes forget to stitch it on before I sew like assemble the bag together so then I need to hand stitch it on if I want it on there and then a denim boxed bottom and just a side note, I am not a small business. I make these for personal use only. I will not be recording a tutorial or teaching you how to make my bags because there are tons of tutorials out there. Um, some probably paid, some for free, and I'm just not set up for it and it's super time intensive. So sorry, not sorry, I will not be doing that. In this bag is a new cast on. And these are the Descent socks and I'm knitting them up using October's Farmer's Daughter Fibers Sock Squad Sock Set. It is in the 75-25% Superwash Merino Nylon Blend 4-ply, 4 463 yards for 100 grams, and this colorway is called Pucker Up. Here's the ball band on the screen. Are you ready to see the colors? All right. Um, the sock set comes with a 100 gram and a 20 gram. So here we are. The 100 gram I've divided into 250 grams. It's this beautiful, kind of like a red wine color. And then the mini is kind of a taupey, taupey warm gray. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it had to be color work because of the beautiful contrast and they're both solid. So these socks have been started and I have gotten past the initial color work and I love it. Are you ready to see it? Ah, I'm so excited to show you.
So here are my socks with the beautiful color work. Now this pattern is a free pattern um, and the needle sizes, I can't remember if I changed the needle size or that is what was called for because I don't have the pattern in front of me. But I am using US 1 which is 2.25 millimeter and US 1.5 which is 2.5 millimeter. I'm going up to the US 1.5 for the color work section just to make sure that it is um, still stretchy and can go over my heel. And then for the solid stockinette portions, I am using the US 1. The pattern does call for a folded cuff, but um, they do theirs a little bit differently, so I just did it the way I wanted to do it. And I um, cast on with my contrast color, knit 20, no, knit 18 rounds. Um, then I cut my contrast color, joined my main color, knit 14 rounds, and then folded the wrong sides together, knit to the cast on edge, and then um, knit one round of the contrast color um, before starting my color work section. I enjoyed this color work section very much so I cannot remember if there's also it written out but I followed the chart and I redrew the chart in my project notebook so that I could put in my main color and contrast color and color it in the way I'm using it which always makes it a little easier for me to follow because when I glance at it I automatically know which one is my main, which one is my contrast color. And I knit um, two-stranded color work with my right and my left hand. So my left hand will have the contrast color and my right hand will have the dominant color. And that is how I knit my co-work. So um, these socks use a, actually the pattern has a shadow wrap heel in the pattern. Um, it has it, uh, what is it called, a mini gusset. So you actually do some increases before you start your heel and then some decreases afterwards so that you can get back to your original stitch count. So I'm excited to give that a try. I haven't found myself needing that extra room in a shadow wrap heel, but I know for some short row heels like that can be an issue. But I think I will give it a try and see how it goes because it's a good tool or a good skill to learn and to try. So I will let you know how that goes. The next work in progress I'd like to share with you is in my patchwork autumnal bag that I also love. This one also has the moth in the center. Um, it's going downwards on one side and going upwards on the other side. So this housed my DK weight socks before. But once those finished, I of course have a new project to go inside. Now, let's see. In this project bag, I have yarn by Michelle of Woolens and Nosh. And it is the Pressed Flowers colorway in 75% Superwash Cordell, 25% nylon. It's a three ply, 383 yards for 100 grams. Here is the ball band information on the screen. And I decided to use US 1.5 or 2.5 millimeter needles for this one. And let me show you this one. So this one comes in a sock set with the self-striping yarn and a mini. And it is a little bit of a heavier weight fingering at 383 yards for 100 grams. And um, this one comes, I think you have like an 80 gram main color and a 20 gram contrast. Or maybe 30 gram contrast. Well, I can't remember right now. But anyway, here's the yarn. Here's the contrast color. Apparently right now I'm really into this taupey gray, warm gray color because I have two pairs of socks with this taupey warm gray color. It's a beautiful neutral, right? Okay, and then here is the main, and I have wound it into two, they call these like gobstopper balls, um, because again, I'm knitting my socks two at a time on their own needles. So it has this beautiful dark purple, and then a peachy color, and then a light cooler pink. So when I wind these balls, basically I just switch direction every time the color changes exciting to knit it that way. <laughs> Not necessary, but fun. 
and I've started them! Here we go! Here are two super cute little cuffs. Now, how I am knitting these is I cast on 56 stitches using Old Norwegian Cast On, also known as German Twisted Cast On. I use the contrast color to do that. And then I'm doing a knit to purl to rib. And then I did that for two rounds, cut the contrast color, joined my main color, and in my joins of the next color, I knit one round even. That way I don't get like a purl bump interruption in the line. So it's a very neat and tidy line. Now I'm also doing that same thing once I get to a color change in the self-striping yarn. So the self-striping yarn, the color change may not happen at the beginning of the round, which is just fine. It doesn't matter. I will just start knitting without purling um, for one round when I get to a color change. And then when I come back to where I started that, then I will start my knit to purl to ribbing again. And that just gives you a very um, neat line between the color changes. So I did that for about, I think I did maybe 19 or so rounds of ribbing for the cuff. Basically I just wanted to get through three um, of the color stripes before I started my stockinette for the leg. So that's where I'm at with these. I have Progress Keepers on here by Maria of Woolen Forest. Let's see if I can show you which ones I put on here. This one has a purple flower. To go with the theme of pressed flowers as the colorway. And this one has, I think it's Morganite and a leaf. So these I will just knit, 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 knit in the round until I feel like putting in a heel. And I think I will um, use the contrast color for the heel on this one since the stripes um, is just a three color repeat. Um, and I'm starting with less main color. And the toe may or may not be the contrast color. We'll just see when I get there. So yeah, that is it for that one. Okay, last work in progress I would like to share with you is my half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho. This is a free pattern and a lot of people have been talking about it. I know I've been talking about it a lot here. Um, I go into a lot of detail into this project in a few episodes back and I will link to that in one of these corners up here so that I don't go through all of the details again. But um, this is my second one and this one I am calling Deep Autumn. I called my first one Autumnal Winter and I am using uh, Dark Iris currently. It is this beautiful heathered purple. It leans some red in there, which I love, so it's like a warmer purple. And this yarn is 50% Highland wool, 35% alpaca, 15% linen. And I have this stitch marker here, which is a beautiful tree. This is, I think, Birch Hollow Fibers. And then I have, uh, let's see here, a stitch marker. Or progress keeper. I never know which one you're supposed to call it, but um, this one is by Maria Woolen Forest. It's a beautiful moon, a crescent moon on there, and that is where I was last time. So I thought since this is a long-term project, it might be fun to kind of mark where I was the last time I recorded or showed you. So I'm going to move that up now, especially since I feel like with this project, it's a little tricky to see your progress. Um, a, because it's so big, and B, because of just how the short row shaping <laughs> works. I don't know if it's called shaping, but the entire thing is short rows. So these are the stitches that have been turned so far up to this marker here. And I will eventually turn all of the stitches on here. And I am not knitting the large or the small size for this one. I am uh, knitting somewhere in between. I did some math and decided that I was going to cast on 230 stitches. Um, so we shall see how far that goes. I hopefully will not run out of yarn, but if I do, I've decided what I'll do is um, either put a call out 
for help for additional <laughs> any leftover yarn that people might have or um, I will just put in another stripe of like color from like a previous one that I had so all of my colors I feel like kind of go together I think I have um, the rosewood pink that I could potentially then stripe in if I needed to because um, my second color is the chestnut I don't have it here with me. So with that project, I um, am doing the German short rows, not the wrap and turns, and I am slipping one stitch on the edge. So basically, when I get to my last stitch, instead of knitting it, I bring my working yarn forward, slip the stitch from left to right hand needle, turn my work, and then just keep knitting. So I just end up with one stitch kind of along the edge there. Um, I don't, it's probably going to be hard to see, but we'll try to show you. So there's this one stitch that is slipped on the edge. With my last project, I slipped three stitches on one of the edges. I slipped two stitches on a different edge um, just to see what it would look like. And this time I'm slipping one stitch. So do whatever you want. Okay, I think that's it for today of all the projects that I'd wanted to um, share with you. Um, as far as anything else that I wanted to talk about, I... I wanted to talk about the power of empathy, the power of kindness, and the importance of boundaries. Um, to no particular event or anything, I just feel like these are things that are kind of life <laughs> things in general that apply every day and all the time. Um, I feel like especially now that my kids are back in school and they're a little bit older, like they're not toddlers anymore and they can reason you know, sometimes, um, they're trying to figure things out, they're trying to figure out these different social, like, living socially, I guess, um, after being basically in our house the entire time for a year at the beginning of the pandemic, um, some of those things we didn't have to have conversations about, like, why someone does a certain thing, why someone doesn't act a certain way, or someone, why someone says something or doesn't say something, or whatever the case may be. But now that they are in school, it's, they're exposed to different people, different ways of doing things, different ways of thinking, and they're having to process so much information constantly. And I'll admit, I mean, I don't know the answers to everything, and I tell them that too. I said, you know, adults don't know all the answers. Adults don't always do everything the way you think they should be doing, and it's, we're human beings and we all make mistakes and we all have room to grow and to learn and to change and and yeah so like we've we've just had some conversations i wouldn't call them hard conversations i think they're just they're just conversations that are necessary to have and sometimes it's tricky because you have to be in the right not right but you have to be in a certain like brain space <laughs> to want to talk that way or emotional space as well and you have to create that space intentionally to have these conversations because I feel like in the hustle and bustle of school and everything else and work and whatever may be in your day-to-day it can be hard to just pause and be like, okay, what is really happening here? How do I want to respond? How do I want to react? How do I want to be? And yeah, we've just been having those conversations. And I think these are conversations that adults, you know, can and should be having, but also really important for children because you are trying to like figure these things out and what maybe your normal isn't someone else's normal and just, um, yeah, just, just thinking with an open mind and open heart, but still having your boundaries, right? Because self-preservation is also extremely important and you shouldn't just be like walked over on and even if someone's having a bad day, it doesn't mean they can lash it out on you, right? But you can understand that maybe it's not personal that they are just having a really hard time with something and it's not like a personal attack on you even though it feels like it. Now, here's where your boundaries come in, right? Like you can walk away, you can say no, you can go, you know, get help or whatever the case may be, but um, they do go hand in hand. So anyway, in no particular like event or incidents or anything like that, um, there's just been challenges, I guess, you know, like 
sometimes you have blah days and I'm just very thankful that our children still want to talk to me <laughs> about it and I hope to have that open line of communication because I know growing up for me that wasn't always the case and um, I just think it's important to to be there like to let your children know that you are there for them that you are also human but you are trying your best not to be judgmental and not to just jump in and like offer advice or try to fix things like sometimes you know, people just want to be heard and sometimes people just want a hug or just... Anyway, that is where I'm going with that. So, I think that is um, it for this episode. I don't know if I'm coming back on next week or not. I do want to kind of slow down for the rest of the year here. I feel like I had a burst of energy. The kids went back to school. I had, you know, pockets of time here and there to be able to record um, uninterrupted. And yeah, I, so I had a lot of stuff to say and talk about. But that being said, I do want to slow down for the last two months of the year and just, you know, soak it all up, take it in. And I know it'll be busy and in different ways, but um, yeah, so I hope you are doing well and taking great care of yourself and your loved ones the best that you can. Cheers to being creative and I'll talk to you next time.